All right, what I have here is one of those cheap strobe lights you can pick up for about five, ten bucks around Halloween or even in something like Spencer's. And what I've done is, is I've modified it so that I could trigger it myself. Uh, what's normal operation is you turn it on and then you adjust this dial to choose how fast you're going to turn the pulses on. But what I've done was is I've added a connector that I can send a signal to that will make it pulse when I want it to. I added a switch so that I could run it in normal mode so that it acts just like it was when I bought it at the store or I have it set up so that I can trigger it. The other connector is for power. Now these are battery operated six uh, double A's but you know batteries. They always die when you least want them to. So what I did was is I've added this connector that I hook up my own power to. And what I'm going to do is show you how I modified it so that I could trigger it. So here's the strobe light. I have it connected up to power into my switch for triggering. If I put my switch into normal mode and, and turn it on, what you can then see is that it is flashing. And if I adjust the little dial in the back, I can control how fla fast it's flashing. Now, if I take it and I put it in its trigger mode, you see that it isn't flashing and what I did was is I just have it connected to a single pole single throw switch and when I push the button you can see that it flashes. There is sort of a delay between when I send a signal in and when it actually flashes. That's the strobe charging up. So now when I want it to flash all I gotta do is push the button and it will flash. So here we go, here's the inside. Here's the relay which is what I used to trigger it. I used a single pull double throw switch, which you don't have to if you're not going to switch between normal and trigger mode, but I like to use it just in case I'm going to use this in a different display. You don't need to have the power connector if you're going to run it off the batteries. The relay allows you to use a separate source for the signal, but you will have to have either a connector or wires coming out for this uh, trigger signal. Now, tools you'll need, basically a soldering iron, wire strippers, some needle nose, some wire cutters. This isn't really hard to assemble. So let's go ahead and get to it. I'll pull one apart and go ahead and show you how I made them. So here's the unmodified one. I've already went ahead and drilled the holes for the connectors and the switch. Inside it isn't very remarkable. There's a potentiometer for controlling the um, speed, the power switch, and the little tiny circuit they use to pulse this. There's the positive terminal for the batteries, and then the negative terminal is over here. The positive terminal is the one that we're going to end up breaking so that we can do the controlling and to power it. The other items you're going to need is some kind of switch. I have here a uh, toggle switch. You need a single pole double throw switch for this project. This one happens to be a double pole double throw, but this is because I have this laying around the house. The other item you're going to need is some kind of relay. This is a 5 volt relay, and um, it's basically a single pole single throw. And I picked this up from Radio shack for about three bucks and I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and put it together okay the first thing to do is remove the two screws that hold the board on on this particular model I have a screw right here and a screw right here so carefully take those out and now what you want to do is remove the board lift it up carefully so you don't break any of the wires you don't want any unnecessary complication and as you can see Here's where the two power wires go, one from ground and the other from power. Now what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the wire from the positive side of the switch. Let's go ahead and desolder and take it right off. Now go on ahead and I desoldered the positive wire from the battery terminals and I'm going to take the center of the switch and I'm going to solder that in its place. So just go ahead and set it up and drop some solder on there. Okay, the wire is soldered into place. So now take the board and slide it back into its place. Make sure you're careful with the wires and then go ahead and reattach both the screws. Next, remove the 
positive wire, so I have no need for it for on the battery, and take one of the wires from the switch and solder it onto the positive terminal. Like so. Go ahead and take my RCA connector that I'm going to use for the trigger. Slide it in its hole. I already put the grounding washer on. Go ahead and put that on. And then go ahead and tighten it up on the body. Now it's time to put the other end of the coil into the connector. So I'll just go ahead and the wire in and drop a little solder on. Now one end of the switch part of the relay is going to connect to the positive of the battery terminals. The other end of the switch part of the relay is going to connect to the other side of the switch. So just go ahead and put the two wires together and solder them up. Now I did put a piece of heat shrink tubing on the two connections so they don't short out anywhere and I'll go ahead and push it all aside. And the last step is to go ahead and put the power connector on there. Now, as it stands now, this will work with batteries. I have not disabled the batteries at all. So this whole thing still will work with batteries. I just don't choose to run it that way. So I'll go ahead and put the RCA connector I'm going to use for power. It's grounding washer. And I'll go ahead and tighten it up. Next step now is to go ahead and connect up the positive wire to the positive terminal. Just be careful as you're soldering it, you don't move everything over and out of the way that you've already put on there. And lastly is to go ahead and attach the negative wire to the negative terminal. And now your project is done. So here we go. I've got it completed. And I put it in the one position. You can see that it is working like it's supposed to. With no <clears throat> trigger. And then if I put it in the other position. Pushing my button. Cause it to trigger. I hope you enjoyed this project.